we are writing an article about switching payment gateways, and a part of this article talks about the membership billing page, which is the page in our plugin where a member would get an email saying, your payment method on file is expiring, yeah. or your payment method failed, update your billing information. So when those two events happen, an email is sent, a link is included to the membership billing page, but there is a edge case where mm -hmm. the payment gateway for the live site may be different than the payment gateway that was used when the subscription was originally created. Right. The article outline I wrote says that you should put a note on this page to say that we are using a different payment gateway. If you see a notice that your billing information cannot be updated, you should complete a new checkout. And yeah. Patrick and Mandy have asked whether this could be something automatically handled in the plugin. So I am interviewing Jason yeah. slash <laughs> in public talking through how we as founders would think about this as a feature mm -hmm. and the implications. It might help to think about what's ideal. Pretend we could snap our fingers and make it work in an ideal world. That message we show, it feels like a catch-all. Oh, if it I'm is. confused, just show them a message that it can't be updated. <laughs> right, right. Which we're looking at here. Your billing information cannot be updated at that time. So we, we're not making a judgment when we do that. But it, what would you want it to do? You would want it to just work. You can keep your payment settings in the background for authorize.net while you have Stripe settings. And so when you're on this page, we theoretically should be able to tell the subscription associated with this user is linked to another gateway update them through the other gateway as long as we have API information, credentials and things. I think an ideal world, completely ideal world, is that it would come to this page, allow you to update billing information, and mm -hmm. automatically create oh, the new subscription at the uh, preferred right. default site gateway. Right, because you want that. You don't want people on that anymore. What might come up in that post, what I recommend a lot of times, is cancel everyone's subscription, send them an email, tell them that you have a new payment gateway, give them a month free and have them switch over. Everyone says, oh, we can't do that. Not everyone's going to sign back up, which is totally true. There's so a lot you, of fear there for people yeah. who have built up yeah. a longstanding number of people. They're making yeah. the switch for the new payment gateway for who knows what reason. Saying, hey, just cancel all the subscriptions, force them to switch over now. We know they're going to lose sub subscribers. So what you want to do is if someone's dangling onto the old subscription, right. let it go. But when they check out again, give them a new subscription. If their billing fails and we're asking them to update, ideally don't have them update the old subscription. Have them check out again for the new one. So intercept the yeah. – your payment could not be processed email. And instead of sending that, send yeah. a new type of message or send a link to the new checkout page. Filter yeah. the contents of the – payment method failed, click here to update your billing information to actually be like a checkout. At that point, they're already in the stunning stage. They're already expired. Mm -hmm. So them completing a new checkout at that point with the new gateway could, isn't bad. It's a good like thing. We could like redirect them. In some cases, when you say update billing and we can't, let's redirect them to the checkout page. For to the renew. same level. The problem is that update billing says, hey, just update the credit card and leave the subscription alone. Mm -hmm. Checkout has all this stuff. Is it the old price? Then if you check out again, it's going to by default be the new price. Correct. And maybe they're supposed to be locked into their old pricing. Correct. Or when you check out again, proration is going to come into account. It's going to, we try so hard to know what people intend when they're checking <laughs> out. Oftentimes you could get five smart humans and three out of five of them would agree on what's supposed to happen to this user when they check out. <laughs> so Jason has established okay. that this is not a problem not that easy. five smart humans oh. will have consensus about. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we could disable uh, the payment method expiring uh, soon email. We could disable the payment method failed. What helps is that, like you said, if we just let them the payment failed, let their subscription cancel, and then yes. they get the, hey, your subscription canceled, this tabula rasa... Because yeah. at that point, a new checkout isn't okay. a loss. So mm -hmm. don't send the payment information expiring soon message when you right. will be taken to, to the, them to a page that looks like this. The, that looks okay. like, well, you can't actually do anything about this. The thing is, we don't, the software doesn't know what's an old gateway. It just knows it's not the main one. Sometimes you have multiple gateway options. There's and on-site and off-site. You usually only want one on-site. If you checked out. out for an on-site type payment method that was credit card based and the current gateway 
if it was a credit card and it's not the main gateway, you should not send the update billing. And not only and not send the update expire. billing information email, but also Can't. don't show the link to the update billing page from the membership account page. People and perhaps improve the message here. Sometimes we get clever and we hide this because we know it's not supposed to be there. And then people are like, wait, I know there was an update billing there before and now it's not there. Where did it go? Yeah. And then that's why it's good to have it, even though it's not functional, and then show a message saying, this isn't functional for this reason. Sure. There's a really weird edge case too with Stripe, this uh, thing where in the API you say the app that is making this subscription is Paid Memberships Pro. That's a new feature. I don't know exactly when they added it. We started using it in December. One of our customers had an issue where now Stripe, when they're trying to update billing, we say, hey, Payment Just Pro is updating the subscription. And they say, oh, no, no, no. It's some third-party user management system created the subscription to start with. We help them import their subscriptions in the PM Pro. But now you try to update the billing. Stripe says, I'm not going to let you update that because that's not the same application. Why did it start an- happening now when we started passing App ID? But also, it maybe it's just Stripe decided to implement that, implement that as a feature. And they say, of course, like, why let like, different okay. apps edit the subscription? But the app is, this is like a tangent, but it's related that there's other reasons that the update billing page fails. And this is what we're, because this is a similar thing we're saying, yes. like, hey, you know which customer signed up on the old platform because it was before a certain date. Show those customers a message. Sure. Hey, if you were imported over from the old system, you need to check out instead of update billing. Some way to detect and filter or let site owners in a setting or code say this is an old gateway. And if it's an old gateway and it used a credit card. And on-site versus off-site is just a soft designation on the gateway. There's not a piece of code saying this is on-site. No. But we can kind of assume, hey, if you're switching from Braintree to Stripe, you don't want to have those as two options at the same time. Maybe the different most, countries have yeah. sometimes different countries. Like Stripe doesn't the, support this, so I use on site and some the other. longest road to resolving this, which is a medium level of goodness, is like you said, if we still know that the gateway credentials are present in the database, try yeah. it. Right? Let's try it. Yeah, I think this is authorized.net. We're currently on Stripe as I our active gateway. That. Why not try it? We want people to probably check out again instead though, so they get on the new system. The site owner should make that decision. The site owner needs to decide. So then in our article about switching gateways, it's like, here's a bit of custom code, or here's the hidden setting you got to go click. I don't want people using this gateway anymore. Yeah. But so, that could be as simple as erase the gateway credentials, oh, which no, aren't. It is, though, for recurring orders. It depends on the gateway. As soon as we get a message Assumption. saying, this is PayPal and $1,000 was charged, the first thing the gateway API and webhook handlers does is, is this real? And it sends a message back to Stripe and says, so is this too, real? Too and you have to have the eyes to do that. So you can't get rid of the API credentials. You want to have it, but but we do want to detect that situation. Hey, don't let them check out again. Or don't let them update. Instead of update billing, switch to check out. So I think that's this is probably why we didn't code it. It's not even worth programming find the old gateway API and update the billing because people probably don't want to do that anyway. So yeah. instead, we should detect that situation and get them to check out again after their membership expired. I also think because we and don't already support that, by adding that back in, it would cause more confusion. This code has been live for a long time. So anyone who has done a gateway switch doesn't expect that billing information can be updated. So if we add that now, that's going back on a decision we already made. People expect that it doesn't work or they've experienced that it doesn't work. And our goal is to improve the user experience and and build upon a decision we already made. When people try to update billing, the redirect to checkout and have them check out, we should list all the problems with that potential problems and then try to make a list to solve those because those are things we kind of want to solve anyway. It's hard. Some of them need like more direction from the site. What do you intend in this situation? Like the legacy are people locked in or not could be somehow there's a lot of these cases where like importing from another site changing your gateway doing some other kind of system change changing from mailchimp to convert kit it doesn't just work anymore you know like the system is confused and it's handling two different sets of users the default decision isn't always clear but the big one would be if you have a recurring level and you check out early for a recurring People kind of intend to figure out when their next payment date was and then extend their membership from that date and keep it going. And I feel like we have code that does that, or in certain situations we get it right, and some other situations we get it wrong. From... Set up their subscription, charge them $0 today, and set the delay for the sub to start on the next payment date. 
we could at least probably build a gist that says, if we do a redirect to checkout, redirect to checkout, and it's gonna kind of break. It's not gonna work how people really want it. And they're really like, hey, it doesn't really work. We could maybe that redirect to checkout could set the parameter or flag saying, this is a special old user checking out from an old gateway to a new gateway. And this custom code could check for that flag. I mean, in this situation, what I wanna do is find out what they paid, update the pricing. Yeah. And make sure that we start on their old payment date. Subs table fixes this. It makes it easier, but it doesn't fix it. We don't keep track of the next payment date. We either ask the gateway, what was the next payment date? Or we guess, well, you checked out on the 5th, there's an order and you said it was monthly. So I'm assuming the next one's coming on the 5th, the next month, but it's not always the case. Maybe you tweak the subscription at the gateway, yeah. or maybe there's some kind of custom trial built in, or maybe your IPN handler wasn't really working. So we haven't been getting your orders, but then you fixed it. And now we're getting orders and some of them were backlogged. So there's gaps. We can't guess it correctly. The subs table says we're going to actually ask the gateway and keep it in sync. And we'll always have a better guess, basically. I mean, there's still will be what's good, you know, <laughs> ways to fool it. But if we know what their next payment date is, then you can reliably say, oh, give them a trial to the next payment date. It's a thing that you can write in code and know with 99% certainty, not 80% certainty that it's actually going to work how you want it to. That's why we don't do this. There's no straightforward answer. I like the idea of not sending the update your payment method and email. We could also, if that flag was set, ignore old gateways. We could also cancel immediately. If a payment fails, cancel and have them check out again is a decent option for a lot of sites. Sometimes it's a little aggressive. So there's a reason we have update billing code, but it, it kind of simplifies. They fail the payment. I'm going to assume they're not... A, but if, if you do that only for certain gateway, you're kind of minimizing the downside of being that aggressive with your canceling. But isn't that but it, the same as just setting everyone's accounts to cancel on the day they would have reprocessed? The but some, some people will pay for will eight work. months and then get canceled. That's they won't true. just get canceled at once. We're just you know, going to keep taking your money time. until your credit card yeah, is about like, to expire. We can't take anymore. <laughs> and yeah. then we can't take your money anymore. And so now we'll we stop. need permission again to check out. That's not bad. I think we could write some things down to get done and we probably could detect that situation, disable the billing failed email. Then their subscription will get canceled and then we'll get caught by the, hey, your subscription canceled, you want to sign back up. So the code in core would say, this is an old gateway, the payment failed yeah. once, expire and cancel and we'll, immediately. Probably make it cancel too. That's not bad. And then they'll get the canceled email. So the only case actually is the payment failed. So it usually is on the date their subscription should be over if the payment failed. We don't send them the date billing. We cancel them immediately. They get it. Your membership was canceled. They're going to be redirected to check out again. And then maybe they want to get the old pricing. Yeah. Here's a list of articles about how to program that. We have code like this. There's a grace Let period. Them let them have the old price. But the thing is that has to be custom code because it has no idea how your website's set up. No, it doesn't yeah. know how many membership levels you have or what the pricing was or. Thanks for talking this through with me. I hope it illustrates to people who listen that product decisions are complicated <laughs> when you have no control over how people are using your system and mm -hmm. how long they've been using it and that you need to account for obvious use cases, but cool. also edge cases. Great. Thanks.